Natural gas is an essential resource, and getting supplies from one place to another is an industry in itself. There is a lot more to bringing natural gas to your home than simply opening a valve. It's a very costly business, so the gas industry is constantly searching for newer and better ways to improve both their products and operating systems. Today we are going to look at one aspect of moving natural gas, the requirement to add heat as you reduce pressure. Natural gas travels across the continent in pipelines, and a key factor is pressure control. Transportation systems pipelines run at very high pressures. To deliver the gas to consumers, it is necessary to reduce the pressure of the product. What is important is that changes in pressure result in changes in product temperature. As the pressure drops, so does the temperature. In the winter time, these variables are most significant. We've all seen what happens when gases get so cold from pressure drop that they freeze plant equipment. The main problem in the transport and delivery of natural gas is not so much that the gas will freeze, it's the moisture that comes with it. And the problem does not occur so much in the pipeline as it does in the equipment and valves required to control product flow. The pressure reductions and related temperature drop occur in this equipment. Ice crystals can form and block the passage of gas. There have been some instances where the gas supply to a whole town has been shut down for this very reason. New technology is now available to address these problems and at the same time cut operating costs. It's a whole new system to deliver heat called the heat driven loop. The heat driven loop is a two phase thermal siphon in which a glycol water mixture is heated to produce steam. The steam then courses through a system of tubes that can be applied anywhere heat is required. Soon after, as heat is transferred to the desired target, such as a natural gas line heater exchanger, the steam will condense back into the liquid and be returned by gravity to the evaporator, where it will be re-energized again, hence the term two-phase thermal siphon. What happens is, when the steam condenses, it creates space that is readily and very quickly taken up by more incoming steam, so we get a constant supply of heat to transfer. And that's why we call it a heat-driven loop. The transfer of the required heat is accomplished at lower temperatures to avoid the possibility of fire tube scale buildup and resulting failures. Now you might think that it takes a lot of heat to boil water and make steam. Ordinarily it would, but you know that water boils at different temperatures according to how high you are above sea level. As the pressure is reduced, the temperature at which water boils is also reduced. In a vacuum, water boils at around 55 degrees Celsius. So guess what? Put a vacuum on the HDL system and the water will boil at that same 55 degrees which means we can achieve the change of state at much lower temperatures, and that saves a lot of fuel. After we have boiled the water into steam, the steam continues to rise in temperature with very little additional energy required. At that rate, it could give off a lot of heat before it condenses again, and that's the whole beauty of the system. Then again, as the cycle gets going, and it can move at speeds of up to 100 kilometers an hour, it needs less and less heat to keep it going. It is, in fact, the physics of alternating change of state that does most of the work. Other considerations are safety and ease of operation. The ignition source is isolated from any product, and the only thing going in there is heat, not fire. And the low flux rate offers no chance of overheating and no scale-related buildup on a fire tube. It's also less susceptible to weather variants like wind or storms. It's as easy to operate as your domestic furnace, complete with thermostat control and shutdown mechanisms. Due to the design of the burner, we can use a smaller pilot that saves fuel when the heater is not actually in full operation. And because the pilot is less likely to be extinguished, the burner system is far more reliable. Yes, it does work. It is in service, and it uses significantly less fuel than a conventional fire tube does. As well, the heat that is produced is much more efficiently distributed. Considerable research and testing have been conducted in the development of production units to verify some impressive performance results. Let's look at some test data. One such test compares fuel consumption. Savings of around 50% have been consistently recorded. Similar results have been achieved for the Environment Canada standard of heating degree days at 18 degrees Celsius. In addition, bench testing has been carried out by the Saskatchewan Research Council. 
Based on testing done by the Saskatchewan Research Council on behalf of Sask Energy, we have found that the heat-driven loop dry line heater shows significant advantages over conventional line heaters, including improved thermal efficiency, improved combustion efficiency, reduced emissions, improved response time, and a much lower thermal capacitance. An improvement in the thermal efficiency from 55 to 62 percent was measured from conventional technology to the heat-driven loop dry unit firing at approximately 240,000 BTUs per hour. This results in fuel savings of over 10 percent compared to conventional technology fired at full load. Evaluation of the new technology at half load indicates a thermal efficiency of 58 percent compared to 38 percent for the conventional technology. This offers a fuel savings at half load of 35% when compared to conventional line heating practices. Furthermore, all of the testing conducted with the dry unit resulted in higher thermal efficiencies. Clearly results are encouraging and considerable cost savings have been proven. We could save the industry an awful lot of fuel. Using the heat driven loop, heat transference is almost immediate in terms of response time. When the pressure of the gas is reduced and the temperature falls, the system restores the temperature to the required level very quickly. Temperature recovery time is 21 times faster than conventional technology. Another innovation that improves the performance of the line heater is that it responds to the temperature of the process gas itself, not the glycol bath. This results in more efficient heat transfer, less waste, and faster response times. We're not talking about a lot of heat here, just delivering the required amount quickly and reliably. And with reliability comes continuity of service and enhanced safety. In short, no headaches. There are some other advantages we should mention. The results indicate that the use of the heat driven loop for natural gas line heater applications can reduce greenhouse gas emissions by over 10% at full load conditions. Similarly, at half load conditions, a reduction of 35% is achievable when compared to conventional line heating technology. Reduced emissions, another benefit. Then there's maintenance, very little of that, so again, there's savings in operating costs. To find out more, here's how to get in touch with the people who have all the answers. Information and consultation is available 24 hours a day. We'll be happy to tell you anything you want to know. There are other applications for the heat-driven loop in the oil and gas industry. And as we've seen, there are many benefits to take advantage of. So give us a call or visit our website, 